woman is bust my balls. On this episode of the commercial break. It's like when you smell something that smells bad. Oh, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've smelled it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know about that. <laughs> or when you tell somebody, ask somebody else to smell it. Yeah, okay. When well, I ask somebody else to smell, smell. it, it stinks. Yeah. Smell my dog. Does that smell like death? <laughs> We have lost all oh, decorum in this country. A wild place. I, 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 I'm sex positive too, but I don't know that I want my governor making porn movies with his favorite porn star. No. No! Of course not. <laughs> I want my celebrities making porn stars with their favorite porn stars. That's what I want. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I love how he just held up the microphone like that's. I know. <laughs> Sing the part with no lyrics. <laughs> just listen to my video. Just a- <laughs> We're gonna play the video of I remember you, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Let's remember all the dead people. Thanks. The next episode of the commercial break starts now. Mexicans. Welcome back to the commercial break. I'm Brian Green. This is my dear friend Kristen Joy Holdley. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. How the hell are you? Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this, the commercial break. Hey, it's not for everybody, but fact, news, or fiction is guaranteed in 15 seconds or less. Or your money back. Go to the TCBpodcast.com website to collect your earnings. It's Halloweeny. It's going to be Halloweeny. Yes, I think it actually, is. probably when we release this episode, it will be actual Halloween day. Ooh. Freaky, deaky, scary, rary. I'm still not, I'm still fucking hate that holiday, Halloween. But now that the kids are into it, I can kind of get into it just a little bit. I can't wait until they give me the fentanyl colored Skittles because that's, uh, I'm just waiting for that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. exactly. That's that's the If I get off. fentanyl Skittles, then it made it all worse at going walking those kids around for five hours while they whine and complain about not wanting to walk around for five hours. I was and, watching scary movies last night. Were the you? Scary short story things. There's a whole thing on Netflix. Oh, is that the, the like uh, Guillermo del yes, Toro or yes, something did that? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. How is that? It's good. Is it good? Yeah. I yeah. He's like a little, he's a weirdo. You're right. Yeah. That's why I like it. Okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll follow up. I'm not a big scary story guy, but maybe I'll follow up on it. And you know, I know it's Halloween in Atlanta is because the weather starts to get real schizophrenic this time of year. It does. It's like yes. yesterday it was 85 degrees. This morning it was like 75 degrees, and now it's like 55 degrees. I know. It's crazy how this weather is. <laughs> and you know, I was watching like the local weatherman. Glenn Burns? I don't know who the fuck it was. Glenn Burns, you know, uh, I, I don't know what his name is. You know, Pete Robertson. They always have, like, all-American names. John Smith in the, the Action 4 Weather Center. <laughs> right. You know what I hate about fucking weathermen? What? And I just, I'm just realizing this in my older age. I hate about weathermen. What I hate about them is and maybe they've always been doing this, or maybe I'm just realizing it now, or maybe they just started doing it. Is they all take credit for the fucking weather. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm really? watching it like, okay, here, let me give you an example. Up early this morning, watching the local weather guy, you know, Pete Smith in the Action 2 Radar Center, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, it rained last night. I couldn't give you a dry one last night, but I'm going to give you some nice weather before it turns cold later on. <laughs> can't promise you it's going to be great for... It's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who the fuck are you? He's you can't promise me. the weather news. I know. He's like, I got a lot of phone calls. And all, everyone's all angry that I gave him cold weather. Well, I'm sorry I just couldn't produce a warm day for you. It's like, dude, you, I think weathermen have, like, incredibly big egos, is my opinion. Is they, they couldn't quite cut the mustard in the anchor chair. So they went over to the weather department. They learned how to point on that green screen. And then, no, you have to go to meteorologist school. I don't think all of them do. Well, I mean, I think some of them are identified as meteorologists. Yeah. But I think some of them are identified as dingbats who just sit there and point at the green screen. Now, listen, to be fair, we're also a bunch of dingbats that sit behind a microphone. I mean, I'm not giving myself yeah. any more credit than they get. But yeah. I just I know and I've noticed this over the last year that every local weatherman and it happens in every city I go to. The local weatherman's taking fucking credit for the local weather. And it's like you're not making the weather, dude. It's just coming your way. And by the way. No local weather reporter is ever right! Ever! <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? It's a good guess. It's not doing. even a good guess. I guess better than these guys do half the time. On I mean, Sunday, it looks like... Do you think they're just looking at the Weather Channel app and then reporting that? Of course we are, Chrissy. 
I look, take a look at the Weather Channel app, and then I say whatever the opposite is of that. Now, Chrissy, I can't give you great weather on Tuesday, but there's going to be four and a half feet of snow here in uh, north central Florida next Tuesday. And so I want you to get your galoshes and your snow gloves. Matter of fact, you should probably uh, immediately evacuate your house for seven to 12 days. Milk and bread, milk, milk and, and bread. bread. Milk and bread, milk and bread. Oh, it's 80 degrees. Oh, shit, I got that one wrong. Well, <laughs> the good news is we avoided it. We dodged a bullet there, kids. Uh, sorry, I managed to produce a sunny day for you. What do you think, Chrissy? <laughs> Your grin. That's, <laughs> That's the grin they got. <laughs> hey, it's me, Chuck Smith, with the Channel 4 Action Action News job. <laughs> I'm here in the, with the Action Action News copter giving you live weather from the top of the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> do you think they... Sorry, I Chuck, couldn't watched. give you a 12-foot cock, but I, <laughs> I got a fine three-inch penis for you. I never watch the local news. You really. don't? No. Sorry, Chuck couldn't give you an orgasm, <laughs> but maybe tomorrow I'll give you a sunny day. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I'm a, a prediction of a nipple coming in from the west over here. <laughs> I have a nut or two on your, on your thigh. Where, what are you talking about? <laughs> Chuck in bed. <laughs> Oh my God. Chuck Smith, the Channel oh, 2 action Chuck. guy, making love. <laughs> right there, right there. I, <laughs> northeasterly human wind coming from the west. What show was that where the girl dated the weatherman? Oh, was it uh, Modern Family? Oh, I, I never the, watched the, it. The, the I mean, I watched a couple episodes dated of it. The weatherman. Oh, did he? It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. I bet those guys are a real fucking hoot in bed. <laughs> yeah. And the truth is, I bitch and complain. About the weatherman. I'm bitching and complaining about him right now. I'm totally taking them to task. But as soon as the weather gets bad, I'm the first You're one to turn on, on the local news. <laughs> I'm like, Chuck, make it move away. Like that Chuck, what's his name? Chuck, uh, who's the famous? Woolery? No, not Woolery. <laughs> who's the famous uh, weather caster here? Glenn uh, Burns. Glenn Burns, not yeah. Chuck, or Chuck Burns. <laughs> Chuck Burns. <laughs> Chuck Burns. I said Glenn Burns <laughs> earlier. He's like the only weatherman I know. Yeah. No, there was what, Chesley. Chesley. Chesley <laughs> McNeil. He seems like a cool guy. He does. Yeah, I've seen him. He doesn't take, he doesn't claim, he doesn't, he doesn't claim, doesn't. no, like he doesn't him. claim the weather. <laughs> yeah, and Glenn doesn't usually do it either, but Glenn's an old school news uh, weatherman. He's been around he for 83 m- years. I think so. I mean, <laughs> basically since I've been alive. Yeah, radar yeah. wasn't around when Chuck yeah. started. <laughs> he just had to take Jesus his finger. Always he took there. his finger and put it in the air. And now he's got, they got all these complicated tools. Like if there's, you know, yeah. Georgia gets t- tornadoes, tornado season. So when you get tornado season, and you'll get these really complicated tools, like weather tools that they use to determine whether or not a tornado is actually on the ground, right? Is yeah. the wind going that way? Or let's take a look at the ch- you know Channel 2 action tornado meter or whatever. And they really do a good job. Now, I'm sure weathermen save lives. I'm sure of it, right? They tell people to get out of the way or yeah. get down in the basement or whatever. So anytime the weather turns shitty, I'm the first one to turn on Channel 2 action news to see what my boy Glenn's going to say about it. Right. Uh, and I've learned to trust Glenn when it comes to the snow. Glenn's a pessimist. So there's people in this town, <laughs> I won't name them, there's people in this town that anytime the word snow pops up on a weather report, they go ham on it. They're like, well, we're going to get two to seven inches of snow and the kids are going to be out for 15 days. It's going to be fun. We're going to you know, go to the, go get milk and bread. And, you know, this snowstorm <laughs> brought to you by Home Depot. But then you have Glenn, who's who's been doing this for so long. I mean, longer than my dad's been alive. He's been on, yeah, the, he's on the air. Yeah, he's very calm, cool, He's collected. calm, cool, and collected. He's got his assistant, too. Pete, oh, he does? somebody, oh, I yeah. think. <laughs> I bet him and Pete. <laughs> what do you think him and Pete are up to when the cameras are Talk off? Talking weather. Yeah, talking weather. <laughs> I bet that's a fun day. I bet it's fun to go out to dinner with Weatherman. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> what, I mean, what would you talk to him about? You'd be like... I, I don't know, because it's such a topic of conversation normally with people, like in yeah. general, but to actually be speaking to a weatherman about the weather. To be having a weather like conversation a dinner, about yeah, a weatherman a with a weatherman. So, yeah. That's right. It's got to be pretty boring, actually. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Now you probably get a little more insight into yeah. it. Or you could just be like, I didn't need to know that much. Uh, I was just making conversation. Yeah, I didn't need to know where the easterly winds were coming from, really. <laughs> I was just saying it was a nice yeah. day. I don't care about El Nino. I just wanted to say hello to you, Glenn Burns. <laughs> How many times a day do you think Glenn Burns gets stopped? Like, he can't go to a restaurant, can he, without yeah. getting he stopped seems 12 pretty times. Famous. Yeah. 
And you think his children, who are probably, well, grown-ass oh, adults yeah. at this point, but you think his children grew up in an environment where it was like they had to head to the basement every 15 minutes? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my dad was like that. He had a weather, like a weather oh, radio. Are you kidding me? Your dad and my dad are so much I know. alike. I grew up, my dad always had the outside weather station and it yeah. continues to this day. <laughs> and now it, it's become like a whole contraption outside. Yeah, it's got electronics. And it's and got the wind. Spinny thing. Spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my dad had the had the radio. He had like a, yeah. it was like a police radio, police yes. scan. Scanner, but yes. then they had the the local airports would put together the radio. You know, they have like this any town that where you can get an AM reception, which in the United States is everywhere. Every inch of this country is covered by some AM signal. You can get that yes. automated weather report that just keeps rolling on itself. Yeah, right? we used over to have one of those too. It was yellow. Yeah, I'll never forget. It was a speaker and yeah, unbelievable. It was the weather. I'll never forget. My it was like black and it had these button like these big toggles. You would toggle up or down to get certain channels. Yes, and my dad would be listening to weather, fire, or police activity. <laughs> And then if a bad storm would come by in Chicago, he would pop the back of the back of the station wagon down and we would all sit there and watch the bad storm go through. Really? I know it wasn't highly intelligent now that I think we about it. He could have got hit far. by lightning. Yeah. We didn't go that far. <laughs> but a number but if my dad smelled the a tornado was in the air. You can kind of, there is kind of a smell to the it's air. It's kind of a smell, and if it's light outside, you can see the, those cor- those clouds twirl. I've been close enough to one to see them swirling. <laughs> Speaking of tornadoes, have you ever seen those little like mini tornadoes? You know where there's all of a sudden you're oh, yeah, yeah, a little dust, little dust bunny, little, little yeah, yeah, swirl, yeah, little swirls. What they're, are those? I don't know. I don't know what they're called, but I used to see them on the <laughs> playground email a lot. Glenn Burns. Yeah, and, g- email Glenn. Yeah, email Glenn. See what that's all about. Because <laughs> I, I call them mini tornadoes. But, yeah, you know, they're just like. I think they're swirls. called whirling dervishes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the official okay, meteorological okay. name. Okay, I think so. Okay I think that. it's a whirling dervish. Fact news or fiction? Fact news or fiction? But when I was a kid, those things used to go through the mm-hmm. playground. Yeah. right. They used to go. Vroom, I saw they, one the, yesterday on the, in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> I saw one down in Florida one time when I was a when I was a young man. It was like one of my first vacations on my own without my parents. And we were deep sea fishing with some dude's dad and we could, a wall, we saw a water spout, but yeah. the water spout went onto the beach and it was like wow. pulling up umbrellas and the umbrellas were if from our vantage point, were going hundreds of feet in the air. And it was like <laughs> a real tornado, but not a real tornado. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was like kind of a nice, it was a partly cloudy day outside. People were like screaming and yelling and running around. It was incredible. <laughs> Weather's so terrifying. So terrifying under the right circumstances, but so benign on the other circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's like our weather right now. Like, I know it's Halloween because I know that the weather is schizophrenic. It's cold. It's hot. It's warm. It's chilly. It's all these things in one fucking afternoon. It can be all of the same things. This is true. And so, uh, yeah, happy Halloween. So happy Halloween. I don't like Halloween. And I don't like it because of the weather. And I don't like it because of the stupid. I just don't like it. Because I know that the teenagers are going to ruin my mailbox again this year. Fuckers. Uh, But I did want to talk a little bit about scary movies. Oh, good. It's not necessarily a scary movie in the in the traditional sense. You turned me on to Dahmer. Yeah. Did you watch Dahmer all the way through? I did. I figure it's it's called Monster. Is it called Monster? I think it's called. I thought it was called Dahmer. Well, it's about Dahmer, and he was a monster. Yeah. No, he certainly was. (laughs) That's for sure. Did you watch it all the way through? I did. I I didn't want to, but I'm one of those people when I start something, I've got to finish it. Yeah. So I was like too into it. I was like, why am I watching this? Like, (laughs) "Eh." it's like when you smell something that smells bad. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But you smelled it. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> or when you tell somebody, ask somebody else to smell it. Yeah, okay. When I ask somebody else <laughs> to smell, smell it, it stinks. Yeah. Smell my dog. Does that smell like death? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does he smell like he's dying? Yeah. Should I put him down? Okay. Uh, yes, I didn't want to keep finishing it, but I did. I. I like that actor. I oh man, he was so fucking He's good in, in that American role. So was Niecy story. Nash. She was great in, in the role as the neighbor. If you haven't seen Dahmer, uh, I'm not spoiling anything because you know, news alert: Dahmer well, you, got caught and died many years ago. You know the story. Yeah, you know the story, but not in this kind of detail. And what I really liked is they got in the head of Dahmer, and he and uh, whatever his name is. What's the guy who? Uh, you know, he's making all the movies. Evan. And, Evan. No, somebody. I no, think. no, I'm not the actor. Oh. Who's, who's the guy who who directed it? Oh, was it Ryan Murphy? No. Ryan Murphy. Yeah, it's it Ryan Murphy. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Makes Ryan sense. Murphy. So Ryan Murphy directed, wrote, and uh, partially wrote and directed and produced this series called uh, Monster uh, about Jeffrey Dahmer. And the way that they get into the head of Jeffrey Dahmer and from the first killing, from the way he's a teenager, the way he interacted with his father. Now, 
Ryan Murphy will even tell you this is very dramatized. Like, this yes. is not actually what happened, but they took some license. But I just think it gives a good general idea of where his head was at. And I've seen other... <laughs> where his head was at? Well, I didn't say where the Jeez. other guy's head was at. I said where <laughs> his head was at. <laughs> it was in a bad, bad place. It's unbelievable yeah. how he got away with that for so fucking long. And the way he got caught was... Un- there are dead bodies in the room... And the police officers basically step over the dead bodies. Yeah. And the way that they get he get they get caught is because the police officer opens a desk drawer and, and finds, finds pictures, pictures of decapitated people and is like, Well, this is real actually. Yeah. This is not like some makeup bullshit. This is real. Ugh. And Dahmer got away with this for so long. At first I was angry with Ryan Murphy a little bit for humanizing Dahmer, who right. was clearly a monster. Oh yeah. And I heard the families of the victims were not very happy. Of course, with it. they don't. It brings yeah, everything back up. It brings and, everything back yeah. up, and there's, they're never going to be peace and no. closure. They're always going to be haunted by what happened to their loved ones, and they're always going to be haunted by the, you know, empty seat at the dinner table. Like all those things are never going to go away. Right, and I even think because I started looking up stuff whenever I'm really into something. Yeah, I'll yeah look me up too. Stuff. So yeah. I was, I think the parents are dead. But the brother, he had a brother. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think he changed his last name. I would have, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's you shouldn't have it. There should never be no. another Dahmer. No. Like, they, you can't name you someone. Can't. You can't name a kid Adolf in Germany. You should never be able to name someone Dahmer again here in the United States. No. That last name died out. I was so fascinated by Dahmer as a kid. And not fascinated in the sense, like, you know, I wonder how he chopped those people up. And I wonder if I could do it on my own. I was fascinated by <laughs> I was fascinated by serial killers in general, like of course, how they tick. Yeah, it's fascinating. And so my dad let me get this like Time Life series one time, like Ooh. the Killers or whatever it was. <laughs> but it was a it were books. The time Life series, the Killers. The killers. <laughs> time Life Music presents music we murder to. But it was a book series. Okay, like a hardcover. But And then it had a lot of words, but a lot of pictures, too, right? So it made it double interesting for me. Mm. And one of the books, so there was like John Wayne Gacy, um, you know, Ted Bundy, Charles Manson, who wasn't technically a serial killer, but he asked other people to kill on his behalf. But then, um, but then Jeffrey Dahmer. And yeah. I was probably 15 or 16 when this book series came out. And this was just all happening a couple of years previous. It was in every newspaper and every news report ever, ever. Even the weather guy reported, well, it's crawling with a chance of decapitation, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> so I was yeah. fascinated by this. And to watch it come to life on screen, to me, was it was just fascinating. However, I say all that to say that I didn't like the, the last two episodes. I thought they were kind of anticlimactic. I mean, besides the fact that Dahmer gets killed, I thought they were just kind of anticlimactic. It went through a lot of stuff that I didn't know if it needed to necessarily be in the, in the program. But the first five episodes, mm. Chrissy, were I, – I couldn't watch them fast enough. Like I was like, wow, this I is know. a powerful fucking them performance. I watched Jeff was out of town too. Why would you do that? I don't know. I started. Why would you do that? Because I know Jeff won't watch it with me. He doesn't like that stuff. He doesn't like it? So does it make him nervous? I, yeah, he doesn't like scary stuff. Yeah. And I do. So. It, does it make him nervous or he just doesn't like it? He just doesn't like it. Yeah. See, Astrid, it makes her nervous. Like she <laughs> – she was like, everybody's talking about this Dahmer. And I'm like, I know I'm watching it. And she's like, you're watching it without me? And I'm like, Astrid. Do you really Astrid, want to watch it? Astrid. You can't watch a rom-com where someone gets beat up. Like, are you going to be able to watch Dahmer? Where they're literally showing people getting sliced up? I mean, yeah. it was in some of those scenes were highly intense. Yes. But I loved it. And you get a little bit in Dahmer's head. And then, you know, there's one thing I have to say about Dahmer. About Jeffrey Dahmer. He's a monster. He's dead. Good news, good riddance, all that good stuff. He was had no feeling, empathy, or sympathy for any other person, I think, yeah. in his life, or at least that's the way it seemed, oh, yeah. maybe except for his dad and his grandmother. But when he got caught, he told everybody everything straight up on the tits. He was like, I want you to understand what's going on in my head so that you can catch the next guy before this ever happens. Mm. He knew what he was doing was monster like yeah. and he knew it was problematic he wasn't like john wayne gacy who his last words were you know uh go fuck yourself or whatever you know yeah everybody can go that to hell. on netflix too and that yeah, was yeah, scary yeah. the john Ugh. wayne gacy thing yeah oh that was right like right where i grew up Ugh. i actually think i was taken by john wayne gacy but i think he gave me back <laughs> i think he was like ah. oh my god <laughs> 
I don't even want to deal with this kid. <laughs> He's a talker, this one. Shut him up. <laughs> uh, that grew. That happened to right where I grew up, <laughs> right around the time when I was born. So I guess I'm considering myself one of the lucky ones. But I, Dahmer, I don't give him credit, but I do say that, you know, thank God that, or thank the universe that at the end, he gave the, all of this information to psychiatrists, psychologists, and investigators so that they could help catch the next one. Because I think Dahmer, in some circles, is credited with really having been an open book so that they could kind of understand mm. what was going on through his head. And, you know, that last scene where they're, like, fighting over his brain? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wish they would have been able to get into it. Like, I don't understand why yeah. his dad didn't let the brain go to science. We're talking about Jeffrey Dahmer's brain here on the commercial break because it's our <laughs> Halloween episode. <laughs> Funny stuff. <laughs> this is a this is a laugh a minute, guys. <laughs> uh, but thank you for turning me on to that. I did, yeah. I did want to mention that You're I, I saw it. Yeah, listen. <laughs> got any other good uh, decapitation <laughs> decapitation Jeez. shows you got? <laughs> Anybody else? Any other kind of cannibalism you could you could point my way? <laughs> the new American Horror Story just got started. No, nah, it's too scary for me. I, I, <laughs> That's yeah, too scary for me. <laughs> no, I'm not into that. I could deal with it if it's real, but if it's like, you know, I just don't like scary movies. It's not that I'm scared of them. I'm like, Jeff, I'm just like, I just don't care for them. Yeah. But what is the new American Horror Story all about? It's about like 80s New York. So. And, and what happens? That's all I'm going to give away. Well, maybe that's, maybe that's all you're going to give away. I to... just got started. So. Okay, but like, there's well, killings and there's things happening in New York City. It's just about people getting murdered? Is that what it is? Like yeah. scary people killing innocent victims you don't know who's the killer yeah oh it's like one of those like a a twisty turney Mm -hmm. you know i watched that ryan murphy one that one that's ryan murphy oh that is Mm -hmm. i also watched uh american justice the bill clinton story oh yeah yeah. that was like not not ended up being very good to me i was like okay okay she no, gave him a blowjob. I, I stopped watching it. I yeah, after like too. the third I was episode. Like, oh, I remember this from the news. It was a compelling. Com- it was compelling uh, acting by the actress who mm-hmm. played Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. yeah. But the Bill Clinton, whatever his Ralph Fiennes or whoever played uh, Bill Clinton, that wasn't very good. And then at the end of the day, it was like, eh, it's a blowjob. You know, yeah. it's a blowjob. We got politicians mm-hmm. that do a lot worse now. Yes. Yeah. There's poli- <laughs> so, so there's a politician in New York. And he wanted to let everybody know that he's very sex positive. He's a very sex positive kind of guy. I think his name is Mike Itzit. Itzit. Okay. He wanted to let everybody all he's, – he's running for governor, I think is what it was. He wanted to let everybody know how sex positive he was. He's all about you know body positivity and yeah, do what you want to do like and let it all fly. And you know he's just one of these guys. I like it too. He's running as an independent. He has absolutely no shot at becoming governor. 0.0% of people are voting for this guy. So in the last weeks of, you know, we're running up on the election now. And so in the last weeks, he figures, I'm going to show people just how sex positive I am. (laughs) And he hires, hires his favorite porn star to have sex with him live on Pornhub. uh, And and they record this in in a room. I'm not even kidding you. (laughs) This guy is running for governor. He's like a 55-year-old white guy, tall, you know, like a, like a 55-year-old white guy. Like most people would think of a 55-year-old white guy. Tall, bald, kind of bulgy, you know, kind of pudgy, you know, got that dad bod or whatever it is. And then there's this porn star. He hires her. And this is the beginning of the, the porn video. I don't want to show this, this because it's a little too racy for the, even the commercial break. But here's the beginning of the porn video. And I don't remember her name, so excuse me. So we'll call her uh, Madame Flowers, right? She's like, hi. It just the screen pops on. Hi, my name is Madame Flowers, and I just want you to know that no one has coerced me. I am doing this of my own volition. I do not no one is forcing me to do anything against my will. I am happy to have sex with, you know, Representative Itzik. Please understand that this is my choosing. Thank you. And then the next shot is like this guy, this guy on top of her, like boning her. And he, at some point, I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to say either. We have lost all the decorum world in this is country. A wild place. I, 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 I'm sex positive too, but I don't know that I want my governor making porn movies with his favorite porn star. No. No. Of course not. <laughs> I want my celebrities making porn stars with their favorite porn stars. That's what I want. Kim Kardashian. So he goes, so they do this, they do the deed and there's weird angles. Cause what they're doing is they're taking their laptop and they're putting it around the bed 
and it's just like weird angles and you know it's it's just a bad 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 porn movie but at the end then he then he does this whole like stump speech at the end of the porn video <laughs> He's like, I'm Mike Edson, and I'm running for governor, and I just want you to know I mean, I'm going to lower your taxes. That's one way to do things. Taxes. That's one way to get I some I think attention. he was hoping that he could just get a few extra write-in votes. If, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I bet he will If he could show some. what a fantastic <laughs> lightning lover he was. <laughs> oh, my God. I think this is just an excuse for Mike Ixit, or whatever his name was, to have sex with his favorite porn star. Could be. That's my personal opinion. In but, the middle of his campaign. Why not? Hey, Chrissy. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> speaking of porn stars, yeah, kind of speaking of porn stars. <laughs> yeah, I knew where you were going. <laughs> speaking of sport porn stars, I was trolling on the internet. Oh, as you as do. I do. And he wasn't necessarily a porn star, but he was reportedly dating some porn stars in his heyday. And his name is Mr. Sebastian Bach from Skid Row. Oh, of course. Do you remember Sebastian Bach from Skid Row? Yeah, I do. You know, I Uh, no, he didn't okay. die. He was just playing a couple nights ago. He, <laughs> okay, that's like, good to know. You know, thought. they did that whole Motley Crue, uh, Poison. The uh, hair band. The hair band. Was it Mike Motley Crue, Poison, mm-hmm. and who else? Motley P- Crue, Poison. Wasn't Bon Jovi supposed to join oh. at one point, but <laughs> well, John mean. had lost his voice or something. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, you know my feelings on Motley Crue. Of course. I think Vince Neil is <laughs> taking everybody <laughs> for a... Uh, <laughs> my heart! I'm out of breath. Just look at me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, everybody knows my feelings on Vince Neil. It's our most popular video on, on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> my sister loved it. Too. And by the she way, not up. one person disagreed with me. <laughs> we have like a hundred comments, and there's not one that disagreed with me. Uh, so it's clear that everyone agrees that Vince Neil is just stealing the money. And yes. but you like, listen, it's I saw nostalgic. some. I saw a lot of con. They're now going on their own tour because it did so. This concert did so well. This tour did so well. They're going on their own worldwide tour next year. Now, I wouldn't pay a dime to see Vince Neil. I was getting ready to say the same thing. Like, I would not pay for that. But if somebody gives me tickets, I'll go. If you give me free tickets. We need to go, I think. Well, somebody's going to have to give those tickets to us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> somebody is I refuse to pay for them. So if we have a nice <laughs> listener out there that wants to give us a couple of Motley Crew Jeff tickets. can expense them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> I, I don't even want the TCB involved. I don't want to see the receipt on the TCB ledger, so I'm not no. buying any Vince Neil tickets. But it would be for research. Yeah, if it was for research purposes, because I watched a lot of the... I wish they were the audio was good enough, but they're all crowd videos. I must have watched 50 videos from this last <laughs> tour, and Vince Neil did not improve his voice, not one fucking <laughs> bit. Not one. He's still a rather... <laughs> A rather roly-poly rock star running around out of breath trying to remember his own lyrics. Yeah. It's really bad. (laughs) So I decided to see what Skid Row was up to. Hey guys, it's your old pal Uncle Brian with a small reminder about this Halloween season. The local news is reporting that ayahuasca-laced Twizzlers are a thing and they're likely to happen to you and your children. So make sure you sample all of those Twizzlers before you feed them to the dog. Now you know, and knowing's half the battle. And since you're in the know, go to tcbpodcast.com. All the audio and all the video are right there at tcbpodcast.com. We now have a toll-free text message line, 855-TCB-8383. 855 TCB 8383. You can still use 661 Best to Yo, but for our international friends, we now pay the tab. And we'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments, concerns, or content ideas? We're taking them all. Go to youtube.com slash the commercial break to watch our full episodes. I promise you you're going to like these videos. They're most likely funnier than the audio, and that's because Chrissy and I have nothing to do with it. Our sponsors support the show, so do us a favor and support them whenever you can. Let's hear from those sponsors, and then we'll be back to this episode of the commercial break. 
Pandas. All right, puppies and pandas, I gotta let you know that this episode is sponsored by our good friends at Lululemon. Now, gents, I know what you're thinking when you hear the word Lululemon. You're thinking of yoga pants. And it's true, they do sell yoga pants at Lululemon. I've seen them right in my household, on my own wife. But what you may not realize is that Lululemon is for men also. I cannot explain how velvety smooth the brand new licensed to train joggers are that I just purchased. Winter's coming up, and there's nothing that I enjoy more than a good pair of warm, durable pants. Something I can kick around the house with, but I can also go out into the car and go to the store. And Lululemon sells more than just workout clothing. They sell slacks, coats and jackets, hoodies and sweatshirts, pants, polo shirts, shoes, shorts, socks, and swim trunks. So guys, set the joy in motion with the best Christmas gifts at lululemon.com. Now Chrissy and my wife Astrid had an opportunity to get some stuff from lululemon.com also, and they'll be talking about that in the upcoming weeks. Get festive this season, get cozy this season, get comfortable this season, get lululemon this season. lululemon.com. That's lululemon.com. And thank you, Lululemon, for becoming a sponsor of the commercial break. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving, plus high in fiber with five to 10 grams of protein per serving. Available on amazon.com, walmart.com, and at hero.co. That's H E R O.co. Delicious ultra low net carb Hero Bread buns and tortillas. Soft and fluffy, high in fiber, and with zero grams of sugar, up to 10 grams of protein, coming in at under 100 calories. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Now, when I was a kid growing up, Sebastian Bach was kind of the epitome of the bad boy, right? Mm-hmm. Skid Row was one of those. You know, there were like the well, hair metal. I've got a name like Skid Row. It's good to have one. Yeah, I mean, when you got Skid <laughs> you Row. You start, start there. You start badass and you kind of go more <laughs> badass from there. And then when you had a voice like Sebastian did, which was like the super high falsetto voice that would just like, you know, ah! <laughs> there was the, these hair bands. And then there were the rock and roll, like more edgy bands, like I think of like Guns N' Roses versus Poison, right? Or yeah. Motley Crue versus Warrant. Like they're a little bit more edgy. They're still kind of cock rock. They are cock rock for sure, but there was a little bit more edgy to them. And as the music went in that direction, I became more attracted to that like edgy stuff, like yeah. Guns N' Roses. And okay. So Skid Row, I, <laughs> Skid Row, I felt like fell into one of those, that category. Yeah. Even though he has a super high falsetto voice that just keeps, you know. Ah! Yeah, they had a good run. They had a good run mm-hmm. of three songs. Right. Which was great. <laughs> and, That's correct. Then Pearl Jam came along and killed them all. <laughs> but I wanted to know, what is Sebastian Bach up to these days? The last time that we saw him, he was on a VH1 reality show. Uh, like Celebrity pick House. One. VH1. <laughs> pick one. All of them. No. Yeah. There was like seven people who just went on a run there with they VH1. Did. It was Gary Coleman, uh, like Janice Dickinson. Jones, yeah. I feel like. Uh, the Dr. Guy, Drew. The <laughs> yeah. guy from, um, you know, with the clock, the big clock. Oh, Flava, 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 Flava. Flava. Yeah. He had like seven different shows on he VH1. Did. Um, and then you had Sebastian Bach, who was also in a number of these. So last time we saw him, he was still rocking and cocking out. He was drinking hard. He was having fun. He was doing the whole thing. So you, you can understand how it came as quite a surprise to me when I found out that Sebastian, Rock, or Sebastian Bach just played a show a couple of nights ago. <laughs> oh. And it, it wasn't quite the rock star that I remember. But, you know, let's take a listen and see what we come up with. What <laughs> okay, do you say? Let's do it. Here we go. That's the end of August. Didn't Great White kill a bunch of people at a club one time? I don't know who Greg White is. Great White, the fire, oh, the Great, great white. white, the oh, fire, great. great White. Yes. First of all, where are there they? There was a big fire. There was a big fire and mm-hmm. a lot of people died. And yeah, that was remember? In Chicago. 
uh, yeah, or out or in Illinois or yeah. somewhere up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember the other studio we had? And we always felt like it was a great white concert waiting to happen. <laughs> yes. I shouldn't laugh. Like 12 people died or 20 people died. It was, it was awful. Yeah, that was. Um, I watched a documentary. It actually broke my fucking heart. But, I thought uh, he was saying Greg White. No, he was saying like, Greg White. <laughs> that's it, my Greg White. <laughs> I was like, is he a comedian? <laughs> he plays the spoons better than anybody. Clickety clackety clickety clack. <laughs> uh, so here, just let's get, let's preface this. So here we see uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. This is not Skid Row. This is just Sebastian Bach with a band behind him, a very sparsely populated band behind him. Like, that guy's wearing no shirt. I think that's that's the old rock move, right? You just yeah. got to take your shirt off. <laughs> There is a I mean, super yeah, skinny. He's super skinny. Jeans. Yeah, he's still on a, a diet of diet <laughs> coke, cocaine, and Marlboro Reds. Right. Which, hey, listen, if you can do it, you can get away with it. God bless you. <laughs> um, we got the drummer. He looks a little bit younger. Then you have uh, Sebastian, looking okay, by the way. He looks, you know, fit as a fiddle. He's a little chunky, but you know, yeah. Who amongst us isn't? I That's suppose. That's correct. He's wearing a vest. He's wearing a vest. They're on a tiny stage that doesn't even look completed. It looks like it was half built. And I don't know where they are, but the crowd is obviously very small. You can hear it in the background. I'll start it again. Yeah, it looks like a tiny place. But I want to point out one specific thing about this stage. You know, sometimes when the stage is big, which this isn't, but when the stage is big and the crowd is big, they put video screens behind the drummer and then sometimes on the sides so the people behind can Can see see. what's going on. Yeah. Yes. If you look at the video screen behind the drummer here... (laughs) They are literally... It's like a TV. Yes. It's not even a TV. They have literally screen shared their iPhone. It is. It is a screen share. It is. is. Yes, it is. It's a screen (laughs) share. And they have uh, Sebastian's or Great White's Instagram page up (laughs) and they're showing it. This is the most rinky dink event. Wow. That's a good catch on that iPhone because it absolutely is. Yes, I know. I I studied this a couple nights ago and I got to tell you, I'm betting a thousand dollars this was at a county fair somewhere. I'll find out, but Mm, here we go. Could be. The end of August 2022 in the fucking box, baby. It's the end of August 2022. I'm counting down the months until I can collect Social Security and stop doing this. Who says, who celebrates the end of August? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the end of February! <laughs> it's so stupid to celebrate the end of August. But okay, let's let him yeah. ramble. Yeah. Did you guys have fun with Greg White? Greg was awesome! Greg. He could play the spoons <laughs> like anybody! Yeah. Did you have fun with Tech Nine? Everybody said no. <laughs> this isn't Tech Nine a rap group, I think. I don't know. I think Tech Nine's a no rap idea. group. The poor rap group. <laughs> Let's switch between Sebastian Bach and Great White. Story of the year. <laughs> Look at the screen behind her. They are showing like community <laughs> service awards. I know what is going on. I have no idea, <laughs> but I want to know so bad. Like, why did they're showing some lady holding up an award I think for that like? Might be him. That's not him. <laughs> it's the same hair. That looks like Allie. Ours looks like our friend Allie. No, That's not doesn't. Sebastian Bach. That is a young lady. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think. Or maybe you're right. Maybe I that think is. Maybe him. Yeah, maybe that's him in his heyday holding a gold record. <laughs> exactly. I think that's it. <laughs> the one gold record right. that Skid Row made. Yeah. Let's hear it for all those bands. But even more than that, let's hear it for me. But well, while we're at it, let's stroke my cock. Yay! <laughs> Let's hear it for these leather pants that have held up all of August 2022 (laughs) without a dry cleaning, not once. Let's hear it for me. Yeah, let's hear it for the pants that smell like Nico. (laughs) Do you get the impression that... (laughs) I get the impression that Sebastian Bach might be smelly. I don't know. That's just me. (laughs) 
other shirtless guy. We got I, I didn't notice him. He was hiding back there. He was, he's so skinny. He, he's so he skinny. He turns mind. to the side and you can't see him. So now we got two very skinny shirtless white men with very long hair. <laughs> And Sebastian Bach prancing, literally prancing literally, back and forth. Literally. The six foot and the six and a half foot stage. Talking about what? I don't know. He hasn't even started the show yet. And like, now look at the screen. I know. <laughs> what is I don't know. That's some kid from the crowd. <laughs> and today's picture of the week comes from Billy on Main Street. <laughs> uh. oh, sometimes I have a little too much fun. So many of these rock and rollers, they forget that rock and roll is supposed to be fun. Oh, now here we go. Here we go into some black hole of nonsense. <laughs> Only makes sense yep. in Sebastian's mind. Yeah, it's there are a lot of rock and rollers that are guilty of this, by the way. A lot of old rock and rollers that are guilty of this. Even a few of my favorite bands are guilty of like a lot of stupid chatter in the middle of songs. But he hasn't even started the fucking music yet. Like, uh, even Nico agrees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> now they're both going crazy. Let's hear it for the end of August 2022! <laughs> right? Woo! Woo! We got enough bullshit to deal with. Yeah! We come to have fun and listen to some rock and roll with our friends and sponsors. Uh, Beavis, this is so uncool. <laughs> Like, I thought rock and roll stars were supposed to be cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression. Thanks. <laughs> so I dedicate this to all those that we lost in the last couple of years. <laughs> last couple of years, what? All those we've lost in the last couple of years. I'd like to dedicate this to the last couple of decades of people we lost. I want to start with my friend, Guitar Brown Murphy. <laughs> And then there was Dave. I met him at a bar one time. <laughs> and let's hear it for Dave. <laughs> Seven hours later. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's been crazy. Let's hear it for Amy Van Halen. Come on. Let's hear it for Neil Peart of Rush. Yeah. I want to hear a boss from... For Alexi Lalo, my friend from Children of Boda. Oh, yeah, that guy running. from Children of Boda broke my heart. <laughs> They're running down the list. <laughs> he's, he's running out of names. Uh, I mean. this, this is what I mean about Sebastian. I thought maybe Sebastian would like avoid all of this. Motley Crue like bullshit, and he would just still be rocking out. You know, he'd get up on stage and kill a couple songs and then go on with life. But no, nope, he had to stand up on stage and give a 13 hour dissertation on all the fucking musicians he ever knew that he lost. No one cares, Sebastian. But I guess when you pay $29.67 to get into the county fair, yeah, this is what you you're going to get. what you pay yeah. for. Let's hear it for Vinnie Paul and Don I'm sorry I'm laughing at that guy <laughs> because he's just like propped and he's like, yeah. here we go. Well, he's got one of those guitars that's on a stand and just sits there so he can play both the guitars at the same time. So just wait until he gets into it. He, he's doing double duty on good acoustic. <laughs> I thought that looked like two guitars. Hey guys, I, I'm going. I'm, I'm excited about going out on tour in August 2022. I'm glad we got together for this band meeting. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, well, we need a drummer. Uh, I don't know if that's in the budget. Uh, we're gonna need a bassist. Oh man, that's a lot. Uh, we we'll probably need another guitarist to play some of these parts. That's definitely out. That's, I'll tell you what, me, you, I'll bring my iPhone. We'll screen share it. <laughs> And I'll get you one of those stands for your guitars. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> Only if you mention Dimebag Daryl. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> Dimebag Daryl. Who died like five years ago, I think, by okay. the way. And even more, very recently, Brent Woods lost his bandmate. And uh, we all lost one of the greatest drummers that we have ever seen. I want you all. To give a big shout. 
so much better than the drummer we have back here. <laughs> I want you to give a shout out. <laughs> what is going on up is here? Say Taylor I was going to say Taylor okay. Hawkins. And I didn't, I didn't are realize. No, of course they're not. I don't know. Maybe they are. But you know, Taylor Hawkins was notorious he for being in 38 different yeah. bands. Yeah. Yep. Round of applause for Mr. Taylor Hawkins. form for charity for the Taylor Hawkins Family Foundation and we're really looking forward to that coming. Me and Daryl are going to be down in the front of the Los Angeles LA Forum playing before Lakers game on behalf of the Charity Foundation. Let's give it up for that. <laughs> it's true. He did show up at the, at the concert that okay. went on for 13 hours for yeah. Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. So this one's for Taylor, and this one's for everybody here tonight that lost a loved one in these crazy times. This is a song called, I remember. Wow. Starting off with yeah, that Yeah, just going straight falsetto. Well, there's only one song that anybody came to hear, and so if you're going to do it right, start off with the one that everyone knows. I was say, you know what I'm saying? Usually they save it for the end. So, you know that song? Uh, I wish uh, I wish Astro, Astro would never come on air, but I wish I could remember that song. Um, it's a Spanish song. It's been very popular. Uh, oh, God damn, I can't remember the song. But everyone, everyone was singing the song about two years ago, and it's in Spanish. Okay, and it's about uh, like was it Justin Bieber? No, 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 no. Like the Esposito um, or something? Yeah, Ed, Ed, Esposito. Yeah. yeah. What's how do you say that? Uh, I, I don't know. Esposito. <laughs> yeah. Esposito. <laughs> you know the song, and okay? You dance just All right. like that. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, this guy sells out. Yeah, like this. You shoot, you shoot from the hip. <laughs> Shimmy. Despacito. I got around that of that the gringo. The pito. The lito. He's a gringo. <laughs> yeah. He shoots from his hip pasitos. <laughs> he dances like a moving Cheeto. <laughs> He's as white as George Alito. He's a gringo. <laughs> okay, all right. So, Astrid, this Astrid loves this artist. He is known for so much more than Despacito, which yes. he wrote. But, and, and you, he can go anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, except for the United States of America, and 400,000 people will beat themselves silly to crawl on top of each other to get into the front of the stage to see this guy do all of his hits, right? Yes. He's a very famous songwriter. He's coming to Atlanta. To the Coca-Cola Roxy. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, capacity, 150. Like, I mean, it's yeah, a tiny, it's, it tiny, tiny little theater near the Brave Stadium. Mm -hmm. No, it's in Buckhead. No, not anymore. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. That, that's yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Uh, so it's not the Buckhead Roxy anymore. It's Coca-Cola Roxy now. But anyway, whatever. So we get tickets, and she is super excited to go here, to go to this, this concert. So we go with a couple of friends, and we're in the balcony. And on the floor, they have set up tables around oh. this maybe 20 by 40 dancey area, right? Where, yeah. Like the general admission. Well, the show starts, and there's about 16 people in the entire place. By the end, there's about 180 in the capacity 150. So it's really packed in there, right? Right. But let me explain something. He knew exactly why people came to see him for that fucking Desposito song. So he literally started... With Despacito. Then, toward the end of the concert, he played Despacito. And then, for an encore, he played Despacito. <laughs> well, I feel like there were a couple different versions of that song. Justin Bieber was involved with one of them. He was. He yeah. was. But Justin Bieber didn't show up at the Coca-Cola nah, Roxy. <laughs> but this guy played it three separate times. Yeah. And the last one was like 15 minutes long. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, this guy knows what he, this guy yeah. just knows why people came to see him. <laughs> exactly. And he gave them exactly yeah. what they came for. Yes. <laughs> He's playing himself. Yeah, he's playing a video that's, from that's right. when he played it before. He's playing the video <laughs> from like of the video <laughs> of this song 
from 1987 yes. when he was 40 years younger. It's funny. Yes. I love how he just held up the microphone like that's. I know. <laughs> Sing the part with no lyrics. <laughs> just listen to my video. Just. A- <laughs> We're going to play the video of I Remember You, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Just remember all the dead people. Thanks! You want to see all the lighters up in the air tonight? Lighters? No one has has lighters lighters anymore. anymore. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I don't know. If anybody's going to have lighters, it's this kid row crowd, (laughs) I suppose. What's that? In the background, all of a sudden, the, yeah, the screen uh, started. <laughs> I know, like, it's so weird. So they started playing the video of this song, the one we all, some of us remember from yes. 1987, yeah. right? When I was like a little bitty kid, and like, this was like, I mean, I was not like 11 when this song came out, 9, 10, 11, something like that when this song came out. And now all of a sudden, there's now Thundercats there's... on the back. <laughs> Do you see that? Yes. He's playing a Thundercats cartoon. <laughs> what is going on? Know. Who's in control? <laughs> They've lost all control. And meanwhile, the smoke machine is going ham. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get a shot of that, babe. <laughs> Who is he talking to? Oh, there's a lady sitting on the side with a cell phone. I saw this in the video. You can't see it, but wait till the smoke clears up and you'll see her. <laughs> I don't think he should be doing that move, no, by the way. Uh-uh, no, his, his arms, arms are like, like yeah. <laughs> he's got that old man flab on his arms and he's waving his hands back and forth. And with each wave, it's just creating other waves in his arms. <laughs> Uh, oh no. He should wear a shirt. He should. Yeah. yeah all these guys sleeve. should wear a shirt. Short sleeve. Yeah, short sleeve. Long <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> Tuxedos be good. I don't know. Something. <laughs> Straight jacket. I'm not sure. <laughs> Look, see the woman there with the cell phone sitting on a chair? <laughs> That's his babe, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I got it. This is like, the, the, I'm in a skid row concert. No, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm dating Sebastian Bach. <laughs> he really is a loser. Like, he just went on a 15 minute tirade, and now he's doing the 15 minute <laughs> intro to the song. <laughs> While the video plays in the background. While the video plays in the background. They left Thundercats. Yeah, Thundercats. Ho! (laughs) (laughs) Do you see the guy with the 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 guitar stand? Yeah. I'm just going to let this play until it kicks in because I want you to watch while <laughs> okay. he kicks in with the guitar. Okay. Wow! <laughs> that was awesome. I can't. <laughs> Do you remember in he, the 90s? He just dropped that acoustic <laughs> He just dropped it. <laughs> yeah. He went, <laughs> Do you remember in the 90s they had a Sony commercial where the guy was sitting in front yes. of a speaker and like he just got blown away? Yes. I just imagine little children in their parents' hands. And when that kicked in, kids just went flying. Ah! <laughs> Dimebag Daryl! <laughs> <laughs> he really did kick it in. What you can't see on this video is that this is the tiniest little stage at a county fair, I'm assuming. And each of the guitar player, the gay bass and the guitar player, each have four incredibly large Marshall amplifiers. <laughs> it's so much power for such a little situation. And they're using every bit of it. Anyway, you know, I think uh, Sebastian sounds great, actually. I uh, So much yeah. better than... Is that Sebastian or was it the video? <laughs> I'm not particularly sure, but either way, I thought he sounded great. <laughs> Good for you, Sebastian. Keep rocking. Keep rocking. He just turned into, like, a nice old man is what happened. You know, a lot of these guys turn into, like, grumpy old dicks. He's just, like, a nice old man. Look at you. Look at you, Seattle. You're wonderful. St. Louis, I think it was. 
<laughs> St. Louis County, you're looking great. Babe, take a picture of this. Hey, babe. Get my flabby arms. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> Oh. oh my God! We've had fun today, haven't we? Yes, we have. Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta do. laugh. Yeah. Sometimes things are so shitty, you just gotta laugh. <laughs> That's it. I gotta go make some phone calls. <laughs> Throw myself get into em, my em. pool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the commercial break soon to be coming to you from outer space. <laughs> oh well, we always have fun here at the commercial break, and we want you to join in on the fun. So many of you. Writing in, texting in, calling in. I, I got voicemails I haven't even gotten to yet. We really appreciate it. 855-TCB-8383. That's 855-TCB-8383, our brand new toll-free text message hotline. Or you can call and leave a message if you're so inclined. You might end up on the on the podcast, though. Just make just be aware. That's your, This is my disclaimer. <laughs> you may end up, your voice may end up on the podcast. Um, but keep them coming, guys. We just love to hear from you. We love to hear your stories. We love when you ask for advice. You're sending us pictures. You're telling us why you love the commercial break. You're telling us why you hate the commercial break. That's okay, too. We're all right with that. Or you can go to tcbpodcast.com. You hit the Contact Us button, and you send us an email. You can do it uh, right there from the website. There's also all the audio and all the video. But what we'd really love you to do, I mean, contact us first. But if you got to do a second thing, go to youtube.com slash the commercial break and hit the subscribe button. Uh, because Morgan does such a great job editing those she videos. Does. It's really like a whole different show when you watch it. It's a whole different show yeah, when you watch when it. She did the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Uh, she finds secret ways to make fun of me on that show, yes. on that, on that, on the full episodes. And I love it. Keep it coming. Morgan, thank you so much. We're in love with Morgan. Yes. Uh, TCB member, a TC, a third member at the TCB table on the videos for sure. Um, and one more thing I did want to say is we are actually getting people that are now subscribing to the Instagram, <laughs> like more people than we've ever gotten before. So it's still not a lot, but it's more than we've had before. All right. So I promise we'll be posting soon clips of the commercial break. Okay, Chrissy, I Don't guess that's... Don't promises. Uh, right. <laughs> okay, I guess that's all we can do today. I think so. I love you. I love you. Best to you. Best to you. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I always say we do say we must say. Bye. Bye.